In this video, I'm going to do another legal translation. This is a pretty standard employment contract. Um, and I'm going to go through some details. And as you will see, I'm focusing very much on the target language writing conventions uh, so as to make the contract appear like it was uh, written in English. Although, of course, I'm going to still um, use explication to show when there are uh, to, to explain German terms for the target audience. So I've already done a couple of segments um, and I'll, I'll try to explain really quick. Um, and uh, I got machine translation on but I'm, I'm uh, editing heavily or not using it at all. So the as you see here the employer, the uh, the Arbeitgeber, the employer I'm not capitalizing because the employer is called differently in this contract. This is not the, they're using a synonym here. This is a problem in the in, in internal coherence uh, or consistency of the, the source text. The employer may assign any other reasonable activity corresponding to the employee's qualifications and abilities. Um, the Arbeitgeberspräschik, you see here they are mentioning the patient of the sentence, uh, the employee, twice. I'm mentioning him once uh, to simplify the whole sentence. So uh, the employer may assign, uh, which is normally transitive, but uh, in this case I'm, I'm letting it end here. The employer may assign any other reasonable activity corresponding to the employee's qualifications and abilities. And by ellipsis I'm implying to the employee, the employee, but it's it's kind of self-explanatory, so I'm not going to write it here. In individual cases, employee capitalized because it's defined um, in the introduction that uh, here and after the employee will be referred to as employee uh, with a proper noun. Employee undertakes to temporarily perform other activities as required for operational purposes. So here you got to know I'm, I'm really adapting. In individual cases, employee undertakes, verpflichtet sich der Mitarbeiter, and uh, I'm not saying the employee is obliged, the employee is obliged. Why, I'm not, why am I not saying that? First of all, obliged is ambiguous. It can also mean I'm very obliged, uh, I'm, very thank I'm very grateful. Um, Instead, I want to clarify that the employee is signing this contract and thereby um, he's, he's saying he's going to do it. And for that, you normally say undertake. You can also say shall. But a lot of legal uh, guides, writing guides, they advise against shall. So I'm going to say employee undertakes to temporarily perform other activities as required for operational purposes. Why am I not saying as required by the company? Well, because this is not a company, this is an, um, a non-profit association. So I'm going to say at for operational purposes for running the association's business, more or less. Um, here I am uh, turning a, s a passive sentence into an active one. Die Vergütungsregelung wird berührt. Instead, I'm saying, das berührt die Vergütungsregelung nicht. This will not affect the remuner remuneration regulation. Uh, regulation is wrong. The remuneration agreement, right? They agreed on something. <sighs> remuneration agreement. We got to see what's the difference between remuneration and a fee. Because the person here has money paid for work or service. So this is correct. This is a salary for an employee. Um, because there are fine differences between compensation, remuneration, fees, and so on. So you want to be sure you're using the right word. Um, this will not affect the remuneration agreement between the parties, obviously. Um, contract duration. Duration of contract. I prefer contract duration compounds instead of prepositional constructions because they're simply shorter. Contract duration. The contract is concluded for the period 
from 1 April 2018 to 30 September, oh my god, to 30 September 2018. I, I prefer this format because there is no ambiguity. You know that um, American date format has the day and the month switched compared to Europe, so I like to write out the month so there is no misunderstanding. Contract duration. The contract is concluded for the period from you could also say the contract runs for the period if you want to make it really simple. Well, you can say we, it's concluded from the period from whatever. Okay. The first um, three months are agreed as a probationary period. Are agreed by whom? This is pretty unclear. This is an ugly passive because it's not saying who was agreeing on what. The first will be a probationary period so it's very clear it will be it means that the contract is specifying that it's going to be like this not maybe not shall be it will be a probationary period um let's make sure that the employment probationary period if that's the actual word you use in english speaking countries because probationary period sounds pretty much like what you're getting when you come out of jail, probation is usually defined in a company's employee handbook. A probationary period allows an employer to terminate an employee, blah, 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 blah. So this is the actual term that you use. Always verify because it could also mean that probation is very strictly confined to the legal, to, to like criminal justice. You know, in English speaking countries, you, you have to verify. Um, during the trial period, see it's the machine translation is switching the um, switching um, terminology here. We want to use the same words throughout. During the probationary period, the contract may be terminated in writing by either party. So I'm very strict. Either party may. I'm very strictly against passives. The contract. Either party may terminate the contract in writing with two weeks notice for without giving reasons. Maybe there is a more elegant term here without giving reasons for, um, well, I can't think of anything shorter. So during the probationary period, either party may terminate the contract in writing with two weeks' notice without giving reasons. Okay. Great. Next. Let's look at the machine translation here. I'm going to use number two. After the probationary period, the the notice period, the period of notice, I'm just going to call it the notice period, will be here again. I'm going to say that it's, the will indicates that it's specified and both parties agree to it. The notice period, the notice period will be two months. Yeah, this is always hard to formulate. Two months to the end of the month. There's, I think you just say it differently. I'm gonna find out. Zwei Monats, it's a Monats, and uh, so that means at the end of the second month from which you terminate, right? Zwei Monate zum. This um, formulation is kind of kind of tricky to translate. Because you want to make sure that everybody understands it, right? So, monats end. By the end of the month. What we actually mean is, see, two months by the end of the month. You want to be very explicit. Will be. Two months after the end of the month in which 
the termination was served. So here I'm using explicitation. So let's say you give me the, um, you're going to terminate the contract on January 15. Um, so the it's going to be two months from the end of January, uh, from the end of January. So that's March 31, right? After the probationary period, the notice period will be two months after the end of the month in which the termination was served. Explicitate, you know, this also forces you to look it up. We're going to verify once more if this is actually what it means. I'm Monats and Monats Enda, so let's explain this. Fristen berechnen sich gemäß 187.88 BGB zwischen dem Zugang der Wirkung eine einmonatige Wo Okay, so it's defined in the German Civil Code. So let's explain it. So let's look right here. Der Tag ein Monat. Welche Zahl nach? Dem, wäre der yeah, at the end of the month, right? At the end of the month, right? So it's two months plus. And correct me if I'm wrong. I'm I'm working kind of fast here. Um, after the probationary period, the notice period will be two The notice period will be two months after the end of the month in which the termination is served. Uh, narrative present, unless a longer notice period applies by law. Okay, this is pretty obvious. Or unless the law specifies or something like that. Um, In case, in, in any case of termination, okay, in any of, in any case of termination, the employee, right, it's fine, can be released. Mm, released is not what is meant until the legal termination of the contract, uh, whereby the whereby is wrong, whereby is absolutely wrong. It's not the correct translation, so you can make the um, without if on the on in this case it's a male on his remuneration without effect on his without effect on his or without affecting in any case of termination employee can be released until the legal termination of the contract without. No, without effect on his remuneration, so remuneration, so it stays the same. Um, Freistellung. I'm not sure that's the right word. To you, you call that suspended, right? When you don't have to go to work. Freistellung von der Arbeit freistellen. Um, this is the term base of the European Union. For those of you who don't know, it's pretty good. It's gotten a new interface now. It's got all the main languages and uh, the terms are well researched. Freistellung. See the kind of exemption. Yeah, it can be exempted. Oh, difficult. Suspension after termination. Let's see if there's a similar concept after termination of employment. Exemption from work. There must be some kind of term for this. Um, Release might work. Release from work. Termination of the with an employer. Termination of employment. Layoff. Termination by moment. 
um, release. This is kind of tricky, and these terms can take a long time to research. Um, let's try to find a word that's simple and easy to understand, because we don't have all day. In any case of termination, employee can be released from work. Here again, using explicitation, released from work until the legal termination of the contract without effect on his remuneration. Is that understandable? In any case of termination, employee can be released from work until the legal termination of the contract without effect on his remuneration. Um, I guess, yes. Um, I would prefer exemption. Can be exempted from work, so I can use exemption. Um, the exemption, or this exemption, to make clear, it's the one from the previous sentence, creating a semantic link. This exemption uh, also fulfills all or any outstanding um, leave. Yeah, well, it's uh, any, how do you call it, your leave, your contractual leave or what? Leave entitlements, outstanding holiday entitlements. This exemption also fulfills any outstanding, well, now you call it paid leave. Leave, paid leave, if you want to be very specific. This exemption also fulfills any outstanding leave, paid leave entitlements. Great. So instead of using the passive here again, because we're we have to in German we uh, by using the passive we are implying a human agent. We cannot say the exempt the uh, Freistellung erfüllt alle offenen Urlaubsansprüche. Um, sie werden erfüllt because a human is fulfilling them. In English we can make it a lot simpler by saying the exemption fulfills any outstanding paid leave entitlements. So, once again, the contractual entitlement relationship ends without the need for separate termination. Yeah, because we've done it before. At the end of the month, oh, that's complicated. At the end of the month, in which the employee, so that's when they enter, when they get, when they turn 65 is what they mean, right? At the end of the month, in which the employee completes unabridged claims, oh, didn't understand it at all, right? It uh, ends with, or the contractual, it actually expires without the need for separate termination at the end of the month, in which employee consistency which employee completes or you can say reaches the age right reaches the age of or the the legal age here we I'm just going to have paraphrase it pretty heavily because it's the, if you go literally, it's going to be really hard to understand. The employee reaches the legal a legal retirement, legal age. Well, not just retirement age, but full entitled uh, full retirement benefits. The legal age for full for receiving full retirement. Benefits or old, you call it an old age pension, right? 
but you want to watch out with pension and pension because these are different. Old age pension, German pension age, old age pension. So the Germans, they call it an old age pension. The full old age pension, see here I'm transforming. Ungekürzt means, literally it means non-reduced um, and full means the same thing as without reduction, right? So it's perfectly justified to write this. Let's look at the sentence again. The contractual relationship expires without the need for separate termination at the end of the month in which the employee reaches the legal age for receiving the full statutory old age pension. Because that's this, that's what I forgot. Statutory old age pension. At the end of the month, so I'm kind of rephrasing, he reaches the legal age instead of um, here, uh, literally the German is saying he's uh, reaching the uh, life year uh, required for the uh, required for the statutory uh, old age pension or something like that, right? And I'm rephrasing all of this because writing that literally would not make sense. There is no literal equivalent for uh, Lebensjahr in English. There just isn't. You have an age. Simple as that. Um, okay, confidentiality, pretty clear. Employee is obliged. Um, see here, I'm just going to say must. Even if he agrees or not, he must. Uh, protect the interests of association in every uh, association is the other contract party that's why it's capitalized because it's predefined in every respect and maintain secrecy at all times even after termination of his activity wouldn't need no, after the end, not after the termination when he leaves, right? Even after the end of this activity for the for association, about all about all association, all, about all matters matters of association matters and procedures of association which come to his knowledge and how can you say that different come to your knowledge this is uh, this sounds very barack which he learns about which he learns about within the scope is uh, just a lengthy proposition during his activity Look at it again. Confidentiality. Employee must protect the interests of association in, in every respect and maintain secrecy. Um, I don't know if secrecy is the right term. I'm going to have to look again. Stillschweigen. Maintain secrecy. Well, actually, they mean he must remain silent about it. Um, Let's look if I, if we have a uh, if IATE maybe has a good term for that. Stillschweigen. Let's look it up. Nope. Stillschweigen waren. Oh, we have to uh, must must remain silent if that's a legal term. You must remain silent. Yeah, that's something else. The right to remain silent. That's not um, keeping quiet about your employer's private business. Um, maintain secrecy. Let's see if that's. See, Stillschweigen bewahren the obligation to maintain secrecy. That's 
sounds pretty much like German translationese, and you can see it here the European Patent Office apparently uses this term. This is often not hard science, even though it's law, um, because maybe this, you know, it will, maybe in, in America it's something completely different in the U.S. legal system. The, and this is obviously the uh, Verpflichtung des Stillschweigen zu bewahren, or something like that. Geheimhaltungsverpflichtung. Okay, uh, another place to look for these kind of things is uh, the BDB, the German Civil Code, because this has an official translation which is fairly consistent. Schweigen bedeutet im Rechtswesen ja oder noch nein. Uh, this is something else. Normiertes Schweigen, beredtes Schweigen, Schweigen als Willenserklärung, Schweigen in der AGB. This is something else. This is like a declaration of intent. Obligation. Yes, they, in the in the dictionary they call it that. The Geheimhaltungspflicht oder Stillschweigen. I'm not very happy with it, but I'm going to use it because it is apparently used a lot. Observe secrecy, maintain silent, condone, connive, approve tacitly. No, it's not tacit approval, bound to secrecy. Secrecy obligation. I don't think there is such a thing in the Anglo Saxon law, but you, this is going to be like how this is going to be all. Um, yeah, a translation of the German, so. Okay, well, let's look once more. Employee must protect the interests of association in every respect and maintain secrecy at all times, even after the end of his activity for association about all matters and procedures of association, which he learns about during his activity. And remember, once more, no comma before which, because it's not restrictive. Um, that means he must uh, remain all about... Uh, it, it applies to all matters and procedures. Um, okay, so if you have any comments, if you saw any errors, that's it for now. Uh, I've worked pretty fast, and of course, after this first step, you would have to do a review. Um, but as always, I can just advise you to work slow, look up everything you're not sure about, and uh, yeah, please leave a comment, um, and see you next time.